Um, so the first announcement is that um, unfortunately there was a um, there was a typo in the notes or there's a problem I was trying to write out um, because I was algorithm exactly and I tried to compress it too much and there might still be um, some problem with this version. I put a, another version which has an extra for loop that probably makes more sense. And uh, um, um, I think this one's correct, but uh, uh, um, I just did this quickly before <coughs> class, so I'll double check this before class. Um, there may be uh, like an off by one error here. So if you if you implement this this uh, high level description, um, then you should be fine. And even if you do a slow, you should be fine. If you follow too closely, and I had a typo in the in, in the um, in, 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 this, in the description that's much more detailed, um, you might have the wrong results. So after class, I will I will um, make sure everything is exactly right and and update. Um, but sorry if this um, if this caused some confusion. Um, so um, let's see. So um, okay. So this, so the, 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 the clustering homework is due on Wednesday, and I've, I've been hearing that unfortunately it's, it's um, taking people a while. Um, so sorry, it's, it's um, requiring more coding than I um, thought it was going to take. Um, so, um, so, um, so I think you know, every algorithm that you actually implement there is something that's useful to know. Um, so this is something that's useful to know how to do. So hopefully it's still, you know, still worth doing it. The next, so if you look at the progression, the next one is due after, is, is due after the break, but it's actually um, pretty short um, comparatively. Um, it's just two streaming algorithms and that's it. So this one's gonna be much shorter. Um, and then um, there's gonna be one other one on, on regression which is going to be um, stuff in MATLAB, or you can do it Octave. And if you've used MATLAB or Octave before, then it should be really straightforward. Um, I'll, I'll basically tell you uh, which uh, which commands to run. You'll have to do some basic plotting or something. I don't have it posted yet, um, but it should it should be pretty straightforward. But it just makes sure you understand how to do each of the, the kind of key algorithms in the regression area. Um, so hopefully that won't take too long. And last year, um, the, the last homework was due kind of at the very end of the semester and I made it so it was, it was optional. You could have it averaged into your grade if you wanted or not. Um, so, so hopefully, the, even though you've spent a lot of time on the homeworks, um, hopefully the, you, you've spent most of the time you will on homeworks in the class already. I'm, I'm hoping that you start shifting your focus towards the project. Um, and with the project, the, the, um, so all of you should, if you were here on Wednesday, I handed, I handed back the data collection report. If you haven't gotten it back, there weren't too many detailed comments on most of them, but you can stop by my office and I have them. Um, so the, um, 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 but the intermediate report is due on the Monday after break. And so let's look at what's actually going to be in that, um, that part. Um, so it's, it's, so basically it's going to be one page per student in your group. So it shouldn't be too much. It doesn't need to be in, you know, fancy formatting or anything. Um, basically two parts uh, um, there's basically two reasons for doing uh, 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 um, this um, um, there's two reasons for doing this report uh, um, one is so that I'm kind of forcing you to keep working on this as you go and to have some basic things implementing so you're not doing all of the last minute and second it a really this is the point where I can actually give you more uh, um, pinpointed um, feedback on what you're doing. 
Um, like earlier with just the project proposal or with the data collection, I can't say too specifically uh, what you could do because you know it's it's really going to depend on how the data works and how the basic techniques work, how you would want to try and improve upon them. So what I'm hoping you can do is to describe some basic some basic things you've done with the data where you've tried some very basic technique and then um, and maybe you can talk about what you're planning to do what what other techniques you're planning to run or what sort of experiments you're planning to run to kind of verify how well this is working and at this point I think you need more specific feedback on what um, what other things you can do so if you show some plots here's the basic thing we ran and here are the sorts of um, what results we got, then I can say, okay, that looks great, here's how you can improve it, or here's how you can try and, you know, um, validate, um, you know, how well it's actually working. Um, so, um, what else was I going to say? The, um, um, so I'm not expecting too much at this point, don't worry too much um, about the writing or anything like that, just kind of, um, um, give me some evidence that you've been working on it so far. Um, oh yeah, so the, um, the final thing is, in the final report, if you have multiple people in your group, I'm going to, you know, it, it's going to be important that, you know, I, I, I can see that if there are three people in it, I want it to be like a larger project than if the only one person had worked on it. And so if you can have an idea here of how you can, you know, um, how, how you will um, um, try and divide up the task among the two or three people in your group, it would be useful to put in this report as well, so that I can say, okay, this seems like a good task. Some people already did this in the data collection or the project proposal um, already, but if you haven't done that, then it'd be important to do that here, so then there won't be any problems at the final report if you have some, if, you're, if I said, well, it looks like you know, this could have been done by two people when only when three people were on it. If you make clear here, then I'll understand more what to expect and we'll be on the same page. So it'll be also good to, 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 to clear that up. So does anyone have any questions on, on this? Uh, not this, well, yeah, this specifically. So um, for, for the final report, for the final report, instead of writing a project, we were, we were thinking about just doing a rail site instead and and just maybe displaying that on a projector. I can bring a projector and I can display it. But that, would that be acceptable or? Uh, so, so maybe you could do that instead of the poster, right? But I, I still want to file a report. Um, so if, you know, if, if, you're, if you're sending, if you're describing something to your bosses, you're probably writing, maybe you're writing an email or something, just, you know, describe what you did in this report and, you know, just try and write it up in, in something. It, I, I have page limits on how much you can write, but there's not there's not a lower amount on it. So if you describe what you did, um, that's fine, right? It, it doesn't need to take up all of the pages you have on. So, um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I have if, if if more questions about this come up, I have my office hours tomorrow morning, and if for for some reason people can't make those office hours and they want another time to chat with me, and you can't catch me in my office at, at, at some point, then you can email me and I can try and set up one of these G plus Hangouts again. Um, I'm happy to do that, but in the, past, um, in the past two times, I've only had one person you know, um, from class be on it. So um, I'm happy to do it again, but just, just let me know if it's something that would be useful to you. All right, um, so we're starting a new section in the class now on, on regression. Um, so this is, um, so when most people think about this, they think about uh, um, just doing linear regression. Um, but, the, um, but the whole area of regression is actually a much larger uh, um, is actually a much larger topic, and there are lots of things it can mean. Um, so you usually start with some sort of data, um, um, 
And so, um, so P is the data, and, and typically you have some number of data items is usually the case here. And there are other cases where this could be some, uh, um, um, like some continuous set, or maybe like one single object or something kind of like that. But in general, you have these, this number of items, and P is some set. And you know, in general, it's going to be easy to think about this in some abstract space where where uh, where p is in like R D. Um, so it's so p is a point set. You have n points in this d-dimensional space. And so in this class, um, in in this one class, this hour and a half today, we'll be talking about that p is in is points in R two, right? So we'll th talk about the simple thing we can talk about on the board. And then the next few lectures, we'll talk about dealing with the uh, um, um, with this in higher dimensions. Um, and so there, there are certain things that that kind of interesting things happen in higher dimensions. But I'm going to try and cycle through a bunch of different techniques in um, just two dimensions and explain like where the basics, and then some some different variations you may not have thought of. Um, you know, different ways of of varying from the basic. Um, sort of linear regression, um, and so if if this is the case, then you've got some um, some points in in R two, and they probably look something like this. And then if we're doing um, so, and then the the point regression is to try and find some model. Um, um, and we're going to call this model M. And this model is, is going to try and satisfy two properties. The first one should be that it's simple. And, and the second one should be that um, it's, it's close to um, the data P. And so what close means is, is again, going to be something that's up to variability. Um, you, can, you can change what it means to be close. Um, and so what simple means is also s something that can be, you know, I haven't defined this specifically, right? So um, in most cases, um, so, so, so what we're going to talk about today is that the simple means that M is a line. Um, but we, we're actually going to generalize this more and not just say that it's a line, but it's a line that has slope that's not too big. Um, so I'll, I'll describe this in more detail in the second half of the lecture. Um, so if we're finding this model, then typically what we want to do is find um, some line like this where all the data points are close to this line, right? And so the so the simplest form of regression is then going to be um, least squares. Linear um, regression, and so if if this is the case, what we want to do is define a line L, which is going to be defined by y equals ax plus um, plus b, right? So any line you can describe like this, and you want to find the parameters a and b that um, to minimize. Um, the sum of all the points in our point set of, uh, of, of P, Y minus um, A times P, X plus B squared, where, where each um, P, X, P, Y, So for every point in the point set, we can describe it by an x coordinate as y. It's x coordinate as y, right? So, so for every point, we want that this. So, so what this term is here is is going to be the representation of a certain point um, if you map it onto this model. So what's going on is that you're replacing a point P. This is P. Then this is going to be a dot p 
px plus b. That's what this point is going to be. And, and um, more generally, you can do this m of p. Right? So if, if the blue line is our model, then m is the representation of the point on this model. Right? And so then what, what this becomes is you can write this alternatively as um, p y minus m of p squared. Right, where this, this term is m of p, is the model representation. Oh, yeah. Why choose minimum j squared? Why not the other That's a good question. So that's, uh, so th th this is the most popular form of regression. It's not the only form. There are other there are other techniques that try and minimize the sum of the absolute value of differences. And so these these techniques, um, you know, are actually going to be more robust outliers. And I'll mention some of these properties, um, but they're harder to solve. Um, this you can use techniques from um, numerical linear algebra, and it generalizes very easily up to higher dimensions and up to polynomial lines instead of instead of just things which are linear to make polynomial curves. Um, and th that one also, you know, the the this sum of the absolute values also generalizes. But to solve it, you need to use um, linear programming basically. Um, there are approximate ways to solve it using some other techniques, but it, it it doesn't have the same sort of numerical, simple numerical solution that the sum of the square businesses has. So, so, so this is a lot easier to solve. And so I, I was reading up recently on some of the history of these techniques, and, and I think the sum of the absolute, the, the um, um, let me write this up, the, um, there's a there's another technique, least absolute, Differences. Um, this is L E P E, and this one is the sum of P and P of um, P Y minus M of P. Right. So, it, so you're just minimizing the sum of the absolute differences instead of the sum of the square differences. Um, and so, you know, these are both being used. Um, around the same time, and both developed by by um, scientists and very early people in statistics. Um, and then this one took over because people knew how to solve for the optimal solution for this one. And this one, you know, they didn't really know how to solve for the optimal solution. You could try and you could you could find solutions and, and evaluate um, how well those solutions worked, but it was much more difficult to solve. Now with now with computers, this one. With linear programming, it may take you know 10 to 100 times as long to solve in some cases because this is going to be based on very heavily optimized um, uh, frameworks that we already know um, how, to, how to do very quickly. And this one involves uh, on linear programming, which you've heavily optimized, but just tends to take longer. So, so that's that's the main reason. If, if time was not an issue, I would actually I would actually <coughs> use this one instead of this one. Because this one's going to be more robust to errors. And I'll scrap some of that. But otherwise, um, you know, uh, the reason is this one's just easier to solve for. Um, OK, so, so um, I assume most people have seen this. Uh, least squares on um, regression before. So, so is it, uh, has anyone not seen this? OK, so, 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 I, um, I, so I've seen this you know, several times myself. And every time I have to teach it or use it, I always have to look up how you actually solve for the optimal solution for this. Um, so I will write this up on the board again for your own, um, for your own benefit. So, um, so, so to solve for so you're going to solve for a and b here, and so the, you're going to need a few things um, uh, um, as 
intermediate steps here. So the um, um, so the average p dot x bar is going to be one over n um, of So if you, if you average all of these x coordinates, then this is this is the average, um, and so you can define the same thing for the y coordinates as well, and then the covariance of um, of p dot x and p dot y is is a uh, Is, is looking at how these two things are varying with each other after you subtract it out the mean. Um, so after you subtract out the mean, how are these, these points varying away from the center? Um, and so you can, you can simplify this down to 1 over n. Um, um, this may be a more um, typical way you've seen it. So if you look at, if you take the sum of each of the individual terms squared minus the, um, the, the means, um, so this is the covariance, and then um, you can also write the variance as of, of Px is the, is the covariance of P. X um, with itself. Um, and so then, after, after you define these terms, and then, and then it's very simple to solve for A as, as the covariance of, of P dot X of P dot Y over um, the variance of P dot X. So this is all you need to do to solve um, for A. And it, you can actually simplify this if, if you look at what these expressions mean, and you can get to p dot x. Uh, um, um, if you take this dot product with p, with p dot y, the x coordinates dotted with the y coordinates over um, uh, the squared norm of the x coordinates. Um, and then once you have this, it's very simple to solve for B as um, so solving for A and B is is very simple in this case. Um, so what, what what this is doing is. This B is this is the shift of this line, and it's just once you, and the A is the slope. So once you fit the slope um, to vary, you know, along the x and y coordinate, then the B just shifts it up and down. So it is uh, is it is in the middle of the means. Um, is it, is, so it's basically an average of what you expect the x coordinates to be once you once you apply the slope to them so that this is close to what the average of the y coordinate is. Okay, so, um, so so this is also, um, I'll just write this up quickly because um, you can, this also extends in a way very nicely to high dimensions as I, as I mentioned. If, um, and this, and it, the and, and in fact, solving this extends up to high dimensions as well. Um, what you can do is that, um, and, and I'll, I'll explain this because the next technique, some of them will also extend to high dimensions and then easily in the same way, um, using the same higher dimensional representation. So what you can do is you can write um, P 
p.x into a um, into this into this matrix x here, okay? And this matrix is going to have um, is going to have n rows and d um, it's going to have n rows and d columns, and so this is going to be now for for points which are which are living in in um, R D instead of in in um, instead of in R two, and so what we're going to do is that the what we're trying to do now instead of of um, using the x coordinate to predict the y coordinate, we're going to use the first d minus one coordinate <coughs> to predict the um, the d coordinate. So this is going to be um, for a point. So each of these is going to correspond to a point. And so for, uh, so, so for a point P, you're going to have P1, P2. Um, so this P is equal to P1, P2, up to PD. And so these first D minus 1 coordinates are taking the place of P dot X, and this D coordinate is taking the place of P dot Y. And so you're going to have in each of these columns p1, p2, up to p, d minus 1, and then the last column you're going to have a 1. So we're going to use, so this is going to be our data we're going to use to predict this y coordinate. And the y coordinate we're just sticking here is as a 1. And we're doing this for each of the end points of this one. Um, and then, um, so, uh, so then you can you can then take all of these all of these data points, and you, you can also write you can also have um, um, some vector y is is going to be equal to the the y coordinate or the d coordinate of all these points. Um, so this is going to be equal to um, so the so, so point P is going to have PD here. So there are going to be end points. Um, um, and you're going to get an end rows, and each element of the row corresponding to the um, the J point is going to be this D coordinate here that you're trying to predict. Um, and so then, in place of solving for this um, using the covariance and the variance, you can set a equals to um, x transpose times x times the in the inverse of this matrix times x transpose uh, times y. So if you can write this high dimensional points as this as this matrix, then you can again solve for y, and then um, and, and actually, this A now is encoding um, this value, this value B we want as well, because it's going to have a bunch of these kind of coefficients, essentially, in front of each of these coordinates. And the last coefficient is going to be in front of this 1. So you're just, the last column of this, this vector A is going to be this offset as well. So it's encoding both the A part and this B part here. Um, and so what's often written also is that you have this H matrix, um, which is called the hat um, matrix, which is uh, which is going to be this first part with the X in front here. And the reason it's called this is because if you want to get your estimate of given um, this, uh, this, uh, um, this, uh, uh, um, if you're given this data set, then um, this is hat of x, and you can get an approximation of it by hat of x times y. Okay. Um, so the the other trick 
you can do with linear regression is that um, if you want to fit um, a, a polynomial to these points instead of just in, instead of just fitting a line to these points, then what you want is that your model m um, um, this this model instead is going to be something like um, a1 or a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. Um, so if, if this was uh, this is now the, is going to be a parabola instead of a line, um, and in in fact you can make this as um, a from i equals zero uh, up to some value t, then you have a i to x to t, where x to the zero is one, right? So, so you can write this model as a problem instead. Well then, instead of using um, these for different coordinates, you can use them for, um, um, so instead of taking p1, p2, p3, what you can do is take um, these, these, you can lift these uh, a single two-dimensional point into a into a higher dimensional space, and then you fit a linear line through it in this whole trick. So, so basically, p x um, p y is is transformed, or if if you just look at the x coordinate, um, this x coordinate is transformed into um, is to one. Um, px, px squared, um, px cubed, you know, and, and you can keep doing this up to the teeth value. And, and so then you have these, um, these higher dimensional representations of the points. Um, even though it's, you haven't added anything to this data, um, but, but then you're just putting coefficients in front of these guys here. And so then instead of trying to fit coefficients to these these um, higher dimensional points, you just use these as the values of P1 up through Pd minus 1. Or this first one you know, can go in this last slide. So you can extend this to, to these higher dimensions and these polynomials very easily. And actually, this the same trick of, of lifting, and this you can use for this least absolute differences, but the algorithm here is going to be using um, linear programming instead of, of solving using this uh, um, the, this either either in this case is this is just a dot product and a norm or in this case it's some matrix operations okay so um, there's there's one more cool thing I, um, I want to say about linear regression is that there's something called the Gauss Markov theorem. And this basically says that um, linear regression is, is the best thing you can do. Uh, um, in, in, um, is a certain, in a certain sense, it's optimal. That, um, so, but in order to say it's optimal, you have to put some conditions on it. Okay, you have to say exactly what's optimal at doing. All right, so if you're, um, let's just limit this, let's ignore the polynomial and the higher dimensional stuff, but you can generalize this as well. But if you want to fit um, for a linear model M um, with Let's see, um, zero expected error. So, so the zero expected error means that if you sum up all of these errors, let's see, um, if you, uh, if this data was drawn from a distribution, 
and you fit the model to, to some points in the distribution, and then you um, fit, and then you took another point for the distribution, what would the expected error be here? Um, then if this expected, then this expected error is zero. Um, so, th so that's what we want for this case. We have zero expected error in this model. Um, and we also assume that all uh, residuals, and these are, um, residuals are basically the, these terms, um, PY minus model P. Um, so, um, so all residuals are not Um, these residuals are not correlated, right? So there's not some weird correlation in the data that you can somehow exploit um, otherwise. So these, are, uh, these should be pretty tame assumptions. Um, then, so if, if this is true, then um, these squares is the minimum, um, minimum, variance on the solution. So this minimum variance, if you look at the variance here, it's saying that the th this variance is, is a covariance. The expected error here, the expected error is is going to be zero. So you're minimizing this this sum of these distances squared. Right, the sum of the residual squared. So we're actually, if we're minimizing this, which is the least squares cost, and the expected error is zero, and there's no weird correlation hiding in the data that we somehow don't know about, then the least squares option is, um, is, is the best we can do. It's the, the solution here is going to be the one that minimizes the square root. Okay, so, so we got this Gauss Markov theorem that says this is basically optimal for minimizing the squared error. Um, we can extend this to polynomial fitting instead of linear, instead of lines. We can extend it to high dimensions and it, everything generalizes very easily. Um, and there's this, you know, this closed form of